This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Okay guys, well this is where we left off. This is our uh, low poly Winchester model. And uh, what we're gonna do next is to prepare this guy for export to your Modbox, okay? So if I select it, you can see it's one object right now. I'm just gonna go up to mesh and separate for the simple reason that I want each individual part to be prepared for export, okay? And what do I mean by that? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this model and in Mudbox, we're gonna increase the subdivision level and turn this into a high poly detailed and smooth out model. And we're gonna use this as a basis, right? Now, what happens with an object in Maya once you smooth that, and I'll demonstrate, is if we take a cube like this, I will hit F to zoom in. If we hit three to preview smooth it, you'll see that it will basically turn into a ball. Okay, and I'll hit one to go back. So what you wanna do is if you want to kind of maintain the shape that you have, you're gonna to go to insert edge loop. And if I add an edge right there, hit Q on my keyboard, go to object mode and hit three to preview smooth. You'll see that it will hold the shape at that end, right? So if I go back and I go to enter edge loop again, and I add one, let's say right there, Q on my keyboard, right click object mode and three, and again, the object changes. So my point is that once we start to smooth these parts out, um, for example, this guy, if I hit three, you'll see that the shape will change and the change is limited to the edges that I've added, okay? So I'll, sh I'll show you. So let's uh, move in here. And you can see close to that edge right there, I added an edge loop, right? For example, if we take this guy, same, oops, same here. One there, one there, all right? We'll go over to this guy. I added an edge right there. I added one right there and at the sides as well. So I did this with this guy too, as you can see and I did that here as well. Now, you don't want to add too much, so I'll just show you that the overall poly count, uh, let's see, is, where'd he go, where'd he go, where'd he go? Poly count is 1,000 faces, which is perfect, okay? So, we got all that, uh, they have all been added. Um, next thing we need to do is apply a color ID to this. So what's that for? Well, once we have our high poly created in Modbox and exported, we'll have a low poly and a high poly, and that will allow us to bake a normal map in Substance Painter. But we also will be texturing the Substance Painter, so we need to identify in Maya which parts will have what type of material, and we do that with a color map, okay? So I want this uh, part and this part to be wood, but I don't necessarily want them to have identical wood directions and so forth. So they're each gonna get an individual material. So I'm gonna select this, right click, assign new material. Let's go to Lambert and let's make that red. And I'll take this one and we'll give that another color, let's say yellow. And then I got this material, this, 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 all of that. That's all the same material. I'm gonna right click, assign a material, Lambert, check the box, something like so. And then these two will have the same material, Lambert and I don't know, purple, whatever. And then we got this guy left and it seems that we need to pull that one out a little bit. Yeah, looks like. So we're gonna hit W, we're gonna move that out slightly. And then that one will have its own material as well. Now this is obviously not the final material. This is just a placeholder. So once we get into uh, Substance Painter, we have a method of identifying what's what, okay? So we have all that. I'm gonna drag select this. I'm gonna go back to Mesh and uh, Combine. And what's left for us to do is to go to uh, edit, delete by type history. We're gonna go to modify freeze transformation and we're gonna go to um, 
center pivot. Okay. Uh, okay, last thing, we need to UV this guy. Now, I'm not going to cover the UV process in this video because it is a very basic step in the process. And uh, if you don't know how to UV an object, I suggest you check out my uh, UV mapping playlist. I think it contains something like 30 videos on UV mapping. So uh, I'm going to do that here and uh, I'll be back with you guys in a sec. Right guys, so if we go to UV and UV editor, you can see that this guy has been UV'd. So we're ready to go. And what we're gonna do is with our model selected, we're gonna go to file, export selection, and I'm gonna go to my desktop. I already have a test here that I'm gonna overwrite. Winchester color low. Let's uh, export selection. I'm gonna overwrite it. And now we're ready to jump into Mudbox and import our model. Here we go. Okay guys, we're in uh, Mudbox and uh, like I said before, it's important to make sure that you have your scale set to meters uh, so it matches with uh, Mudbox. Um, you can see that I uh, put this uh, model in. Uh, it doesn't show our colors, but that's fine. That doesn't mean that they're not gone. This is just a default from Mudbox and our model looks okay. So one of the first things we're going to do here is we're going to increase that subdivision level. So when we add detail, we uh, will be able to hold that shape as I mentioned. Okay. So we're going to hold down the shift key and we're going to hit a D on our keyboard. And as you can see, it jumped up to level one, 4,000 uh, polygons, level two, level three, level four, level five. I'm at a million uh, polygons. Let's go up one more step. 4 million polygons. Okay. Now, depending on your system's capacity, you need to be careful with that because if you go up too high, your system will crash, right? But you can see that the model looks quite different. It looks really smooth. And what we can do now is we can add some detail if we like, okay? So, uh, for example, let's see, we can use a, a stencil, uh, actually not a stencil, a stamp, sorry. Just turn this off. Uh, let's say something, uh, erratic something like that okay now what we can do next is we're going to go to our sculpt here and we got this brush and hopefully you can see it it's quite a big black brush i'll just hold down the b and left click and drag so you can see it better okay something like so and what we need to do is we need to consider the uh, the, the magnitude so if i go over this you can see that there's a very rough value going on too rough in my opinion. So I'm going to hit control Z to go back and I'm going to hold the M key for magnitude, left click and drag to bring that way, way down. And let's try that again. And you can see that there's a very faint kind of structure going on in the wood. Okay. Now I'm not saying you have to do that, but you can. All right. So I'm just going to bring that down just a bit more. And this will just give a very, very faint texture on your wood. And keep in mind that Substance Painter will do the same. This is just to make sure that it doesn't make things too flat, okay? And you can hold down B and make the brush very, very small. Well, that's a bit too small. And, you know, kind of create stuff like that. But that's not the main purpose. The main purpose is that we smooth out that um, whole um, model and one thing I want to do is I want to kind of add a motif here so I'm going to kind of zoom in and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my uh, image browser I'm going to click on this folder right here uh, uh, that, this one sorry uh, let's see I'm going to go to my desktop if I can find it quickly give me a sec yeah, there you go. So just select the folder you want to use. So not the file, the folder. Okay. So the directory desktop and choose. Now I found this uh, motif right here. Uh, it's a Western motif and I'm going to select it. So it will pop up here. And then what you need to do is you need to assign it where you say set stencil. Now, as you do that, it will pop up here and then we can go in, we can go back to our 3d view. And you can see that's now projected. So now we can put it in place on our uh, weapon and we can apply it. 
uh, we can tweak this a little bit. You can see that the um, the multiplier and the values down here. Let's see. Uh, actually, the transformation. We're going to set the scale a bit smaller because part of our stencil is off screen. Okay. So let's try point five. Actually, let's do comma five. Comma five. So we're going to set it half value, comma five, and comma five. And that should work. So now if we zoom in, we can kind of put that into place where we want it. Let's say somewhere like so. And then we can do with our brush here, with our sculpt selected, let's do a quick test. Okay, you can see as I move over it, it's starting to show that, okay? Now, you definitely need to decide whether you feel this to be too rough or not. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit Control Z to go back. And uh, let's see if we can tweak that a little bit. I got a strength here of 0 0.82, and let's try a negative value. So I'm gonna do minus 0 0.5. And let's see if that makes a difference. And you can see that it's pushing in all the white areas and the black areas of my image are raised. Now, if you want that to be the other way around, that's fine. You just reverse the colors of your image and you got that, okay? So this is a kind of a detail that's gonna be not in our face, so to speak, and it's on a low poly, so keep that in mind. So if we zoom out here, and I'll just, uh, let's see, turn that stencil off, you get this kind of effect, okay? So uh, let's say that we're happy with this. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna um, export this model as our high poly, okay? So we're going to go to, uh, let's see, we're going to go to select all, which turns our model yellow. So we know that it's selected and we're going to go to uh, file export selection. Uh, let's see, I'm going to go to my desktop and I'll call this. First of all, we're going to do an OBJ. I'll select this name. I'll overwrite it. And let's do high. So we've got a Winchester color high. Well, we don't have a color in this one, but that's our high poly, okay? So we're gonna save that out. We'll give that a sec. You can see the progress down here. And again, you know, it's four million polygons, so uh, it takes a little bit. And we're done, okay? So a next step is to jump into Substance Painter. Here we go. Okay guys, well, we're in uh, Substance Painter, so it's uh, time to bring in our model. So we're gonna go up to uh, File and New, just to set up a new scene. Uh, I'm gonna leave the template at PBR Metal Rough, that's fine. Uh, here is where we load in our low poly mesh. So I'm gonna select, and let's see, uh, I got this on my desktop. So this is my color low poly, okay. Uh, I'm going to leave this at direct X. I'm going to set the map size to 2K, which is fine. I don't have any maps baked out yet, so I'm just going to simply hit OK. All right. And we'll give that a sec. Let's uh, turn this to 3D only. And let's have a look. All right. So you can clearly see that this is our low poly. It's uh, especially here. You can see that's a bit squared and so forth. All right. And that's perfect. That's what we want. And you can see that by adding the different colors in Maya, we now have the option to select and deselect the different materials that we want to apply, which is exactly what we want. And what we can do next is start by baking out our initial maps, okay? So I'm just gonna go up to view and reset the user interface. So we all have the same view here. And I'm gonna go to bake textures. 
Now, once I do that, again, I get the option to choose my map size. I'm gonna set that to 2K. And uh, let's see, here I have the option to load in my high poly model for my BIC, okay? So I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna use the high poly that we created, open that up. And let's see, what else do we need? Well, I'm gonna leave all of that alone. We're just gonna go as is, and I'm gonna bake all the texture sets. Now, um, because I select all, and we have everything selected, some that we don't need, or even can't use, we'll have some errors, but don't worry about that, okay? So let's uh, hit the bake all texture sets, and you will see that as they are being baked, they will be applied to our uh, low poly model here. Uh, not quite sure how long that will take. So we'll give that a sec. Here we go. Starting to work on it. I'm specifically looking at the area with that uh, little engravement. You can see that it's been added. Um, well, actually, I don't know if you can see that, but I can. Uh, so we'll just uh, wait until this is all baked out. Almost done. And there we go, okay? Just gonna reset that user interface again, view and reset UI, so we're all on the same page. And you can see that a number of maps have been created. I mean, occlusion, curvature, normal, and so forth. And if we now get in close, you can see that we got that little detail going on here, you know, and everything has been baked up. Okay, so what we can do now is apply some materials and we'll do that by uh, selecting and deselecting groups. So let's see what we're going to start with. Okay, let's start with the top one, which is that wood section there. And what we'll do is we'll go in to our uh, materials. We'll look for wood. And this has a little bit of specularity to it, so it's kind of nice. American cherry, that's very suitable. So well, let's make sure we're on the right layer here and we're gonna just left click and drag and drop that on. And you can see that it has added that. The wood direction looks a bit off. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go in and we're gonna tweak the UV rotation. And you can set it completely in this level. I think that looks kind of nice. And what we can do as well is have a look and see if there's anything else we need to tweak. You can tweak the color if you like. We can tweak the fibers. And I'm actually going to bring it down slightly. And let's see, I'm good with this, okay? So let's turn on the next guy, which is our metal. And that will be something like a gun metal. So again, we're gonna go into materials, type in metal, and see what type we got. We got painted steel, we have steel rust. I believe that under smart materials, there's some kind of gun metal. Or actually, maybe I even need to type in steel, steel gun material. Okay, there we go. So let's make sure we're on the right layer. Yeah, we are. Gun material, we're gonna drag that in. No, we're not in the right layer. Now we are. We're gonna drag that in and have that applied. Okay. And we can tweak that a little bit if we like. We can go in. And here are all sorts of options you can play with. The number of scratches, um, you know, the metal itself and so forth. I'm not even sure if this is the material that I want to use. 
Uh, let's see here. Yeah, that's just a little bit too funky for my taste. So I'm going to go to the regular materials instead of this material. I'm going to go back in and just delete that. So under materials, let's go with steel and we'll go with this one. Yeah, that's better. Okay. And obviously you can do with that anything you like. All right. So let's uh, pop that one on. That's fine. We'll go to number three, which is that. I want that to be something like uh, copper or not copper, brass, something like brass. So let's see if we have any options there. We do. It's quite uh, shiny. That's this guy here. So we're going to left click and drag that in and see if we can kind of tweak that color. So we're just going to click on that and see if we can push that more towards that's a bit too green let's have a look yeah looks okay all right so that's that then we got this one that one we're gonna look at that one which is that small element there and uh, let's do the same material on that one okay so let's see if that's the guy we're talking about. No, that one. So make sure that layer is selected. Let's drag select that in. And again, we can make that darker if we like. Maybe even make that quite dark. And we'll turn all of these back on. And then we have the end piece. And again, we're going to go to wood. Oops. And we're going to use the same wood, which kind of makes sense, right? So let's bring that in. And like I said, um, because we did that separate, we can now go into the V rotation. And we can kind of set that angle to any angle we like. Okay. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do this. I mean, you could have something like this. Um, I actually got a question on that on the forum. Um, it all depends on what wood is available for the model and what you would like to use for it. Okay. So let's go with something like that. Okay. I think that looks good. All right. And I'm just going to go in and reset that UI again. And then, you know, you can add a lot of elements. You can, uh, for example, uh, Put some paint on it if you will uh, let's see just give me a sec okay so let's say i want to make uh, the wood maybe a bit grungy or whatnot what i can do is i can go to uh let's see where's that brushes um right there and we'll go up to a new layer uh, not a fill layer a normal layer and we're on that wood right i'll take something like this We're going to get in there and uh, let's just have a look here and see what we got. This is the color right now. So let's go with something kind of a black ish. Okay. You can see that's quite dark. So I'll just hit the control Z to uh, undo that, close that out. And uh, let's see, I'm just looking for that. setting that will allow me to um, yeah I think it's the flow yeah there you go okay by decreasing that flow you don't see it as much okay so if I want to kind of grunge that up a little bit especially at the end here You can do that. And what I want to do, I'm going to go to viewer settings here for a minute. And I'm going to go to the environment opacity. 
just to bump that up a little bit. And then we'll do an environment rotation. So we've got a little bit more light going on. Okay. So I'm just adding some dirt and grind to it. And it's all based on your personal preference. Okay. Just go to this guy. And we can do the same thing if you like. Make sure we're on that layer, of course. Yeah. And so forth. All right. So let's uh, turn everything back on. Let's retrace our model. Yeah, there it is. So that's basically what we got. We're going to get this guy into our screen right here. And um, yeah, it's ready to render. Okay. So with this in our screen, we're going to go to uh, mode. We're going to jump to rendering mode. And let's, uh, let's see, we're going to zoom that out a little bit. Okay. And it's real time rendering right now. So let's put it in the screen like that and we can tweak the settings a little bit. We can uh, pause that render for now. Uh, let's see. I want the minimum samples. I'm going to click on this little pen here of 150 and maximum 1000. That's fine. Uh, let's see. We don't want that. We don't want that. Um, okay, we've got different environment maps that we can choose from. So we're just going to see which one is suiting best. Looks like it's not updating. Not sure why. Oh, there you go. Okay, so let's switch to something else. As you can see, quite dark. Okay, we got that. And then let's rotate our environment. These are way too dark. That one looks okay. Let's bring that up to about here. I want the right light drop on my model. That's kind of cool. Okay. So we're going to leave all of that alone. Then let's see, we're going to go into um, some options here. And I want to have just a, a color plane in the back. So I don't want to see the entire backdrop there. So I'm going to go to clear color, go to the option here and find something that will suit my weapon nicely. Maybe light gray or so looks good. And uh, let's see what else. Basically, I'm happy with how this is set up. Okay. So as you can see, it's rendering. So I'll just uh, pause the video until it's done. And then we can look at the end results. I'll bring it into Photoshop. We can tweak it a little bit and then we'll have our weapon. Okay. Hang on. Okay, guys, we're done. So I'm going to go in and uh, save my render and I'll do that on my desktop and I'll call this uh, Winchester render final and I'll save that out as a um, Let's see as a JPEG, that's fine. And we'll just uh, jump into Photoshop for the finishing touch. Here we go. All right, guys, we're in uh, Photoshop. This is our final render, our output of uh, the render shot. And what we're going to do is we're going to tweak this a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to go to uh, image. We're going to go to adjustments and let's start by going to hue and saturation. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this hue slider here. And as you see, if we push this to the left, it'll become very red. And at some point, even 
way too red. And if you push it to the right a little bit, it will become a little bit more yellow, which is something that is more suitable for a Western type object because of the you know bright sunshine and so forth. Okay, we're gonna look at the saturation here. And again, you know, pumping that way up is getting it quite red. And toning it down uh, will help for your Western effect, okay? And then this one I'm gonna leave alone, okay? Let's see, then next we're gonna to go to adjustments and we're gonna to go to levels. Uh, I'm gonna take the color picker on the right here. I'm gonna click on that little thing on top, which will change that effect dramatically so let's do control z to undo that it's having a too big of an effect i'm not really happy with that so we're going to take this middle slider and bring it up just slightly and we'll take the left picker and pick on black okay so and then we'll bring this back a little bit and obviously you need to find the setting that you're pleased with right Finally, we got these two, and I'm good with it, okay? So this is uh, it, guys. This is our uh, Winchester rifle. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed the tutorial, uh, and if you have any questions, as always, let me know. Uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and hope to see you guys again. Bye.